Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Burke Caritas. This second video of the Blackboard series will continue with premature ejaculation. The definition of premature ejaculation is, before or very shortly after you start or after you start intercourse with your regular parties for three months, once a week, or more, the estimated duration of this is less than two minutes. We call premature ejaculation between about 100 to 120 entries. We consider it normal that the average time of the penis in the vagina is about 5 to 6 minutes, that is, between 250 to 300 entries. Of course, the frequency is very high. In fact, I also set it into stated erectile dysfunction. 320 million people have erectile dysfunction. This rate is much higher in premature ejaculation. To make matters worse, very few people come to the doctor to solve the treatment for it. That's why I think premature ejaculation is much more important than erectile dysfunction in the current period. Now we can divide premature ejaculation into four. It is very important to make a diagnosis here. We can distinguish which of these it is when talking to the patient. Therefore, we draw a treatment program accordingly. Now, primary premature ejaculation, secondary premature ejaculation, variable and preterm ejaculation according to the person. Now we don't actually count the next part as a disease in premature ejaculation. We just give them some information. Something to explain that this is not the case. Let me give you an example of premature ejaculation according to the person. For example, the person says, Sir, we go to work with my wife for 20 minutes. I ejaculate, but my partner can't orgasm. He says I ejaculate prematurely. Now, of course, medically, when the duration is 5 to 6 minutes, if the man does not ejaculate prematurely within these 5 to 6 minutes, if the woman cannot have an orgasm and can extend this time a little, then we say this, then your wife should approach you. Our spouse needs to get closer to us. So or he says, I ejaculate in half an hour at work, I ejaculate prematurely, I want to ejaculate for an hour. She says I want to go back and forth in the vagina for an hour. Of course, this is not something that needs medical treatment. That's why it's called premature ejaculation, depending on the person. The definition of variable premature ejaculation is, changes according to the environment, person and time. For example, the person says that I am with my wife, sometimes he says that I ejaculate as soon as I enter the vagina. Sometimes it takes 15 minutes, he says. Of course, many factors are effective here, but if there is really a premature ejaculation, it should always be in both primary and secondary, that is, in any case, or the patient says something very misleading here, I had intercourse once, I ejaculated prematurely there, so he says I am ejaculating prematurely. But what a hardening of one night stands. However, one night stands cannot be evaluated either under the name of erectile dysfunction or premature ejaculation. What did I say in the definition? I said that premature ejaculation should be with the same person once a week for three months or more, that is, with the same person all the time, which can happen. Even a healthy ejaculator can ejaculate prematurely for the first time in his life with someone he likes, wants, desires. We don't treat it. We're just informing. Now the most important distinction is whether this premature ejaculation is primary or secondary. Not at all. I mean, has it been there from the beginning? Has it been present throughout your entire sex life? For example, the person has been married for 10 years. Has there been premature ejaculation for 10 years? Or has everything gone well for 9.5 years and for the last 6 months? If you have recently had a premature ejaculation, this may be an indication of a disease. If there is premature ejaculation from the beginning, this is not an indication of a disease. So what distinction does it make then? If a person who has been married for 10 years has been ejaculating prematurely for 10 years, there is no need to do any examinations or hormone research. Because that person has had a disease for 10 years, for example, prostatitis, and the only symptom cannot be premature ejaculation, or you have had thyroid disease for 10 years and the only symptom is not premature ejaculation. Therefore, there is no need to examine and research. But if it has started recently in the last 5 to 6 months, the most common reason is prostate inflammation, which is the most common inflammation in men between the ages of 20 to 40. Inflammation of the prostate can cause premature ejaculation. Hormonal causes, imbalances in hormones, for example, high prolactin hormone, high goiter hormone can lead to premature ejaculation. And in fact, the most important is erectile dysfunction. In other words, in premature ejaculation that starts later, it is necessary to ask about erectile dysfunction, that is, to evaluate erection. Why? I've explained this cycle in one of my videos before. 
In fact, erectile dysfunction, premature ejaculation, sexual reluctance and erectile dysfunction complement each other wherever they start, in the form of a wheel. For example, if a person has premature ejaculation, human beings do not want to do the action that they cannot or cannot do again, or they do it very quickly. Therefore, people who ejaculate prematurely will ejaculate even earlier after a while. In fact, sexual reluctance will occur because the person who ejaculates prematurely cannot get enough pleasure and cannot satisfy the other party enough. Sexual reluctance will cause erectile dysfunction after a while, and erectile dysfunction will cause premature ejaculation more quickly after a while. For him, it can also be the opposite, starting with erectile dysfunction and coming to premature ejaculation. What happens here is that since it is difficult for the person to maintain the hardness in the vagina, he thinks that he should ejaculate as soon as possible, at least not lose my hardness. Therefore, there is actually no premature ejaculation, but the person begins to ejaculate prematurely, although the main problem is stiffness. This is also very important. Some medications can cause premature ejaculation. Of course, the partner issue is important. Here's what we call a partner. In fact, this is the difference between variable type premature ejaculation. This is due to problems with the partner with whom he is regularly together. In other words, for example, the person may fight with his spouse, may not want to enter with his spouse, may want to end the action quickly, there may be problems with his spouse, there may be sexual stimuli or vice versa. In other words, he can say about his wife, for example, that I wanted a fantasy, my wife was not doing it until now, but after that we started to do it, and based on that fantasy, I started to ejaculate too prematurely. This can also lead to premature ejaculation in the second. Now, of course, this is easy to solve because there are a number of diseases here. You treat them. If there is erectile dysfunction, they are eliminated. Therefore, premature ejaculation is resolved. Here's the problem. Primary, that is, premature ejaculation, which has been there from the beginning, is really difficult to solve, but there is a treatment. So there is a cure in many ways. I'm going to tell you now. In the first place, the most important reason for premature ejaculation is that the masturbation life before sexual intercourse is not suitable for sexual intercourse. That is, we have a video about fast, secret masturbation, masturbating by rubbing quickly in the bathroom, toilet, masturbating every day, watching porn movies, traumatic masturbation syndrome, please watch it, this is a separate topic, but more. As I mentioned last week, traumatic masturbation syndrome is also important in erectile dysfunction. Therefore, masturbation done incorrectly and frequently and repeatedly incorrectly can cause premature ejaculation because the behaviors are wrong. There are cases related to genetic condition that cause premature ejaculation. I will tell you about it separately when the medicines arrive. Now I'm going through it first. Of course, I always say that the first experience is sexual intercourse at the appropriate time, in the appropriate environment, with the appropriate person. When there is no time, place, suitable environment, with the first experience, that is, when the person is at the age of 18 to 19, at a very young age, in an unsuitable environment, with an unsuitable person, ejaculation may occur in these 5 to 10 seconds. Or he may want to end the action, and this may continue in this way with the perception that this is always the case. This is important. The first experience is also important to him. Of course, there is always a lack of knowledge, myths, beliefs. These are much more difficult to solve. It is really difficult to decipher religious beliefs or cultural social beliefs. That part is a bit of a job for sex therapists, if it's too exaggerated. The lack of information is already being remedied by providing information. Now, we don't treat premature ejaculation, of course, these two. We inform them. If there is a problem here, we already do examinations. He goes with them. Now what remains is this traumatic masturbation syndrome, genetic first experiences, and so on. Here, medicines are mostly used, especially in genetic heat, that is, the rapid sensation of ejaculation. We can divide medicines into two. Medicines used instantaneously, that is, before intercourse, medicines that we use continuously, that is, regularly, every night. Instant medicines are also divided into two. Creams and sprays applied to a local, that is, to the head of the penis or the lower part of the penis, or rather to the sensitive area. They numb this area. When you numb it, when you enter the vagina, that first feeling of warmth, the feeling of slippery is less, so the feeling of ejaculation comes later. There are pills. 
This is actually the same pills that are used all the time. These are medicines that block the serotonin system. Now, I said genetics here before, let me briefly explain it. Now, normally, we get a pleasure when we go to intercourse. Let's say this is a substance called serotonin, which is secreted from nerve endings that allows us to get pleasure, or stimulant. It stays here for a while, but then, of course, it's taken back. And this retraction happens very quickly in some people. In other words, the time between its secretion and its retrieval is very short. Therefore, the pleasure lasts less. So how will the mouth end in the relationship? By ejaculating. Therefore, the desire to ejaculate comes very early in these people. The following medicines, either used instantaneously, that is, used before intercourse or used continuously, prevent this. When it prevents the reuptake of serotonin, this serotonin accumulates in this area and prevents or delays the feeling of ejaculation. How long does it delay? It delays by 3 to 8 times. In other words, if a person ejaculates in 30 seconds in his normal life, he ejaculates after a maximum of 240 seconds by using this medicine. That is, it goes from 30 seconds to 240 seconds. But when the feeling of ejaculation comes, the person ejaculates. Because he doesn't know how to supervise, he doesn't know the stop and start technique. Here, if we want to prolong it even more, behavioral therapy comes to the fore. Behavioral therapies are a difficult treatment. It has been practiced since the 1960s. We also have a BUDEP, ejaculation, control program, which is a distance online education. It takes about 12 weeks. Every day a person works out himself for 20 minutes. In the past, these things were done by masturbating by hand. Now we use artificial vaginas in a little more technological work. We use it in the vibrator. Our goal here is this. The desire to ejaculate will eventually come. What do we do when it arrives? That's the problem. If you can stop, calm down and continue when the feeling of ejaculation first comes to mind, this is called the stop-start technique and this is what is taught in this program. By applying the stop-start technique, that is, the program is difficult to achieve, of course, that is, 50% of the people who start the program cannot continue, and for a number of reasons, but almost all of the rest of the people who complete it are able to successfully enter into the relationship. So, for example, if it is 30 seconds, this time can go up to 300 to 350 seconds without medication. Of course, they improve themselves here after a while, so it's like learning to drive. They teach you how to drive, but you need to practice yourself to get much better. Here, too, it is necessary to proceed correctly. Both married and single people can participate in this program. I try to give behavioral therapy mostly to young people. Do we have to use medicines in patients we give behavioral therapy? Yes, we use it in some of them. Here's how it works there. For example, the person ejaculated in 10 seconds before doing anything. Yes, in behavioral therapy, this increases to 50 seconds, but the intervals are very short. For example, it goes up to 50 seconds, it comes, it does not discharge, it stops. For example, he comes back at 1.30, then it comes back at 2.20. So the feelings come very quickly. This is where the genetic problem comes into play, the serotonin system. Plus, when we start the medicine, then really good results are obtained. Here, it does not come in 50 seconds, but in the third minute, for example, when he arrived, he could check it. Then the sixth minute, the twelfth minute goes like this. Therefore, we add medicines to behavioral therapy in appropriate patients. We do not add medicines directly to the patients we give behavioral therapy. In our program, we have to add medicines to one or two people out of 100 people. Yes, that's all I will gather about what I will tell you about premature ejaculation. Of course, there are videos about each of them on our channel one by one. You can also look at it from there if you want. Thank you.